This is the Seven Figure Agency Podcast. Discover the strategies and techniques to grow a highly successful and profitable digital marketing agency with your host, Josh Nelson. All right. Well, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Seven Figure Agency Podcast. We're interviewing successful digital marketing agencies from across the country. Uh, today, I am honored and privileged to be interviewing Daniel Vega from The Driving Force. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on, Josh. Thank you. Oh, it's awesome. So, I know I've, I've been able to kind of see you have massive growth over the last year here. Um, but before we dive in, just kind of tell us a little bit about your agency, kind of where you're at right now, approximate monthly revenue, types of services, the high-level overview. Right. So we have our agency. We've had it uh, since July of 2018. Um, so it's actually technically my second agency that I've, that I've built up. Um, so it's been a little bit over a year and a half now. Um, we are focusing on the chiropractic market. So we help chiropractors grow their, you know, grow their practice. Um, revenue wise, we're at, you know, that teetering point between like 75, 80,000 a month recurring right now. That's awesome, man. So, so just on the brink of seven figures, um, you've grown it extremely quick. I'm really excited to unpack how you and, and your, you guys are doing that because you guys have had great growth and momentum within your business. So kudos on that front. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, looking at 12 month period, right. We haven't hit like that 12th, you know, that seven figure mark in, in 12 months. Um, last month, you know, this is obviously January, 2020 last month, we crossed over the hundred thousand dollar mark month mark, wow. which was my, my, my personal goal was, you know, to kind of like that milestone, like that next milestone. Um, and then this month we're pretty much on track to, to repeat that again. So. Fantastic. That's amazing. So, so you've definitely got the, the momentum, you've got the engine purring. Tell us a little bit, you know, since, you know, this is where you're at now. I think, you know, really you guys are just at the brink of, of like a whole nother level. But kind of tell us your, your background. How did you start the business? You said this is your second agency. Just kind of talk to us a little bit about you know, that process. Yeah. So um, growing up, I was, you know, I, I wasn't never, I, I was never the, the, the kid who, you know, sold candy bars at school or anything like that. You know, um, you hear a lot of entrepreneurs where they start selling stuff when they're, you know, when they're young. So I, mean, I never did that. Um, Growing up, I always had the kind of the vision of, you know, I want to be able to like live the lifestyle, you know, like um, get dressed up as, as suits, go to fancy restaurants, be able to kind of wine and dine my wife. So, you know, just growing up, I was always envisioning that. And, um, you know, between the ages of 16 to 22, um, I had about 22 different jobs. So, wow. Yeah. So just job to job to job. Um, you know, I went to four different colleges. I dropped out of all of them. Finally completed, you know, a law enforcement academy that I was, that I attended for about 10 months. Um, cause my goal was to kind of become a cop in, in the, uh, in the Orlando area. Um, I, I lived there for like 18 years. So the last job I had, um, I worked for my, for my sister. She had a kind of an accounting office. So we did that for a while. And I was just never happy. Um, you know, I had already graduated law enforcement and, you know, I, I just never saw myself either working, you know, 80 hours a week just to be able to make 50, $60,000, especially with overtime as a cop. Um, I just, I didn't want to do that. Um, and luckily we actually had to move from Orlando, uh, not that we had to, but we decided to move from Orlando to California. Mm -hmm. um, my wife's, my wife's brother, um, she had, or he asked us to move out there because he was going to he was going to, he was about to get deployed to, uh, to Afghanistan. So this was back in 2016 when he asked us to move. Um, so during that time, you know, you know, working for my sister, and I was like, okay, if we're going to end up moving, like, I don't want to, the last thing I want to do is go apply for like, you know, a, a job out there in, in, in California, San Diego specifically where we moved to. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try to find something that I could do from home. You know, I don't care what it is, but I just want to work from home. 
because at that time I thought, you know, if I could work from home, I could work two, three jobs and I could make, you know, maybe $5,000 a month. Um, so I started applying for different jobs. You know, I did a lot of customer service. Um, you know, I did a little bit of telemarketing, you know, I was horrible at it. Not, not any good. And so I didn't want to continue doing that. So I'm like, what else is it that I can do to be able to kind of, you know, support my family at the time it was just me and my wife and we had two girls who were just born. Um, they were maybe like two years old. Um, so back in high school, kind of take a little bit step further, I had done a web design class and it was something that I enjoyed. So the reason why that kind of came up in my mind was, you know, just scrolling through the internet, you see different ads coming up, right? And one of the ads that I saw was, you know, work from home doing web design and, you know, kind of make, you know, make three, $5,000 a month. So that kind of stirred up some, some back history of, you know, something I enjoyed in high school, which was not that long ago, um, probably about five years ago at the time. So I'm like, okay, you know, let me start doing this. And what I ended up doing was cold emailing um, other small design agencies, um, you know, just anywhere that I could find them. And the reason I did that was, you know, I sucked at sales. I did telemarketing, you know, I, I hated being on the phone with people. <laughs> and I'm like, if I want to try to start my own business, the last thing I want to do is, is try to get my own client because I want to have to talk to them and convince them, you know, to, to use my services. And I'm like, the easiest thing that I could do is probably speak someone else's language. And at the time that was a web design agency. Um, so we started doing that. And just telling them, Hey, look, why don't you subcontract your design stuff to me and I'll be your, your designer or one of your overflow designer type of thing. Right. Um, now I wasn't into design. I was more of into development. Mm -hmm. Um, I was trying to figure out how to build a website. So, I mean, I didn't even really know how to do one. But again, back in high school, I was using iframes to, to build a website. And uh, I was like, you know, this is cool. It, it shouldn't be that hard. And, uh, you know, and you had mentioned earlier on, on the other podcast about using Dreamweaver. And I use Dreamweaver to kind of hack my way through, you know, a site and then how it was built, specifically with like CSS and HTML. Mm. So I did that for a couple months until I really figured out how to build the front end of a website, you know, by manually coding everything. Um, so I started, you know, being a more of a kind of third party developer for these small agencies who didn't have, you know, the, the in-house person or the skill set on how to build a website. Mm -hmm. And at this time, this was probably when, when WordPress was coming out. So I mean, I really didn't even understand WordPress. I was like, why use something like that when I could just build it by hand, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I, I started cold emailing agencies. I would send out thousands a week of just cold emails, the same email template the whole time until I landed at least two or three different clients, you know, paying me kind of like, you know, a, a verbal retainer of, hey, you know, as soon as we get a client, we're going to send them to you. We're going to give you 500 bucks. Um, so by the time we moved to San Diego, I had, I had two clients and we, you know, we, we ended up moving out there had two clients and it took a while for me to, to just continue sending out emails until I landed my third one. Mm. Um, at that point, I was like, I was like, I need to find something else to kind of pay a little bit more per month. Um, we were lucky because when we lived in San Diego, we moved in with, with my brother-in-law and we didn't have to pay rent. You know, we didn't have to pay rent, um, bare, I mean, bare minimum on electricity. The AC really wasn't used because the windows were open. Mm. San Diego is a beautiful city to oh, live yeah. in, uh, weather wise. So, uh, but I was like, you know, we have two, two girls and we live in a, in a city that's not, um, you know, cheap to live in. And, you know, if we want to go out, we want to travel, we need to have money. So I started using Craigslist to kind of prospect. Um, I didn't just focus on San Diego as, you know, the place to, to look for jobs. Um, I went out and I actually looked for jobs. Uh, the one that I landed was in Arizona. I think it was Phoenix. So the Phoenix Craigslist marketplace. Um, at the time I was looking for a work at home job and, and that's pretty much what I got. I got contracted with a gaming uh, agency or a gaming business that was into, um, they were coming out with a, uh, 
with a game. I don't know if you're into games, but the most popular MMORG is uh, World of Warcraft online. It's like a huge, massive multiplayer. So they were kind of developing something similar to that. Um, so I worked for them for a little bit. You know, I was making $5,000 a month plus the other, you know, two, three clients that I had. So, you know, so money was good. Uh, money was definitely uh, not a bad, not a bad good. gig for work at home, right? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. So, I mean, I was probably doing at that time maybe, you know, six to seven thousand dollars consistently a month. Okay. So, so what, ha- what, what, what kind of happened there? Where did, where did things end up and how did you kind of move past that? Right. So, you know, we we're doing that. Um, we lived in San Diego for about a year and a half, a year into actually not even a year into, into that, that gig that I got. Um, it was, it was maybe three to four months, um, that, you know, I had the, I had that job cause it was still a job, right? It wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a uh, service provider or vendor to them. I was just pretty much an employee. Um, this was 2018. So 2018, you know, three or four months into the job, um, my brother-in-law, he ended up going out to, uh, to Afghanistan where he was deployed. A month into his deployment, he got killed in action. So this was, this was literally on the morning of my wife's birthday too. Out of, out of all days, you know? And it just, it was hard on, mainly on her. Um, and this was her two months prior to our son being born. Wow. So it was like all these things, like, you know, all these emotions and all these um, just real life experiences that, that we were going through. And I ended up losing that job, that $5,000 job a month. So luckily I had just enough saved to last us for, the next six months. And it wasn't like six months of paying rent because, you know, mind you, we weren't paying for anything. Um, it was just us. So, um, you know, besides all the banks and the trust, you know, trustees and, and all that kind of coming into play. And we, we, we ended up having to move out, um, about this was 20, 2019 June. So June, July, 2019 was like, okay, the banks, you know, kind of took the house away, barely had any money left. Um, we asked my father-in-law who was in Florida to fly out to San Diego to help us move out of the, out of the house that we were in. And the last thing that we wanted to do was go back to Florida, you know, Florida, we had just left our, both of our parents cause they both lived there, both sets. And we were like, you know, the last thing we want to do is drive all the way back cross country possibly live with them again. So we're like, we gotta, we gotta go find somewhere else. Right. Um, so during that time, you know, we'd watch TV shows and we'd watch, I forgot the name of the show, but it was like house flippers. Mm. Um, um, one of the guys, um, he had, a, he had his own show. I think, uh, I forgot his name, but he would always flip homes in San Antonio. So we were like, that's where we want to go. So we were trying to do research, you know, at the last minute, um, at the time the rentals were more than what we could afford. So the, the, the next place that we could go to that was close to there was Brownsville, Texas, which is where my sister-in-law lives. Mm. Um, she had been living there for, you know, probably about 10 years at, at that time. So we called her up and we were like, help us find a rental place because you know, we don't want to just move in with you family of five, um, help us find a rental place and just, just find something for us to move in. So we got down there, the worst place ever <laughs> that she could pick. Um, it was just, Brownsville, it doesn't sound. Yeah, yeah well, we ended up living in Brownsville for a year and a half, but just the house, it was just way too small. Um, I think it was like 800 square feet and the washer and dryer was like literally right next to the stove mm. and, and we just couldn't do it. Tight. So, so we, we lived with them for about a month until we found our own place and, and we lived in Brownsville for about a year and a half. Um, but it just wasn't the right city for us. We just didn't feel like we could stay there long-term. Um, so we would always drive out to, you know, where we are right now, McAllen, uh, McAllen, Texas. So we've been, we've been here now for a good eight years or so. Wow. Pretty much been in Texas for 10 years. So living in Brownsville, you know, we finally found a rental home. Uh, I think it was like July or August. And I was like, okay, this is literally the first time 
as a family that we're living on our own without anyone's help. You know, we didn't live with family or we didn't live with my parents. We didn't live with cousins and we had, you know, we didn't have her brother anymore uh, kind of supporting us. So I was like, okay, it's, it's finally time for me to step up as, you know, as a man, as a husband to be able to take this and take it somewhere, you know, cause the last thing I wanted to do was go find a job in Bronzeville, Texas. Mm. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to go mow lawns or, or do anything else. So I took what I knew, you know, what, what worked for me, even though it, it didn't work that well, but I took what, you know, the concepts and the skills that I had learned, which was cold emailing and just trying to take that to a whole nother level. Um, and I was trying to find any kind of client that I could, you know, it didn't matter who it was. Uh, obviously I was targeting web design agencies, so I couldn't really be niche specific um, because, you know, I had couple, a couple of agency clients and they would service all sorts of clients themselves. Um, but I was like, let me just try to find as many clients as I can, as fast as I can. You know, I, I, I still didn't cold call. I, I never really did that, but I just sent out tons and tons of emails um, until finally 20, 2019 September is when we crossed over the five figure month mark. So it was my first time making like, you know, just over $10,000. Wow. Um, and that was the first time, you know, this was probably about a year and a half since I first started my agency in Florida, maybe about two years that, you know, I finally had the belief that, Hey, this is real. Like you can actually make $10,000 a month by working, you know, for yourself. Mm. And, uh, you know, even though we had gone through horrible life experiences a couple months beforehand, you know, um, you know, with you know my my brother in law passing away, having to move and all that stuff, um, it felt like a great accomplishment just being able to hit that that mark. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and that's kind of where where things just started from there. Awesome. So so you, you kind of made this transition. You had you had some catastrophe. Um, at what point did the new agency kind of come into play and the you know the the chiropractic focus? Yeah. <clears throat> so you know. 2019, this was now, you know, 11 years ago, I, I had grown that agency and that was more of a web design development agency, you know, kind of really being a white label. I was a white label for like eight years. Um, so I did that for a while and then I just got burnt out. Um, I had clients, I mean, I was doing the, the best I had ever done was one month that I did 22,000, but on average I would do anywhere from 12 to 14. Hmm. But I felt like, I was just hounding my clients to pay me. Mm. Um, I didn't have a recurring model at that time. I thought of passive income. I didn't have that type of passive income that I would see from, you know, from other people um, just through different forms that I would, that I would visit. Uh, Warrior forum was a big one back in the day that, that I would just every day, I was just, you know, just see what people are doing, try to buy the latest course for $7. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so, you know, so that passive income was just something I'm like, you know, if yeah, at, at that time I was like, if I, if I had passive income, I didn't have to work as hard. I mean, I was doing 60, 80 hours a week. Um, and it was, you know, and I was doing a lot of it myself. I outsourced a lot of that to the Philippines as well. Just tedious development database stuff that I couldn't do, but still it was a lot of work, um, a lot of chasing. And that's just something I, I didn't want to do. Um, you know, clients would sometimes take three months to pay a simple $2,000 invoice and it would drive me nuts. Um, yeah. And it would make my wife, you know, crazy mad. And so I'm like, I got to figure something else out. So I started, this is kind of when Facebook ads started um, kind of popping up and, uh, you know, and, and being talked about on Facebook. I, w I never really had a, a Facebook social media account. I yeah. built one for clients, but I never had one for myself. So I was like, let me kind of see what this is about. Uh, maybe instead of searching forums, let me just, you know, talk to people and search out groups and whatnot. So, so I started learning Facebook ads. Um, I ended up getting a, a local client, my, my first only and ever local client that I had worked with. And it wasn't really a client. It was more of a part-time job. <laughs> um, so this was around the time that, you know, my, my downhill of my agency um, started. And, and speaking of down here real quick, you know, just something I want to mention, I had lost 
before my own approach of the downhill agency came about because I wanted that passive income, I had lost clients twice over. Mm. So one time was, first time was when my brother-in-law passed away, all the clients, even the ones that I had for my agency, I lost those oh, wow. um, and that $5,000 job. And then the second time over was when my wife went through a pancreatic attack, um, which really I think at that point was the focus of me needing a passive income, you know, because I'm like, if clients are not paying me, I've now lost all my clients because I had to attend to my wife and I just can't repeat the same process again. I can, I'm sure I can get the clients, but I don't want to, I, I want to be able to take time off if I need to, a, a, you know, week, two weeks, but still have money rolling in without the fear of losing clients again. Yeah. So the downhill, the downhill of my agency was actually the third time where I decided I'm dropping all my clients mm. and I'm going to try to go all in on Facebook ads. Um, so again, at the time I had a part-time job was my very first experience of, of using and utilizing Facebook ads. Uh, it was for a local uh, LED lighting company here in McAllen, Texas. Uh, very interesting niche. I knew nothing about lighting, but I was hired to help them with their Google Analytics, kind of, you know, redesign their, their e-commerce website. Um, and I, I think I worked for them for about a year. And towards the later half of that year, I'm like, you know, hey, if you guys really want to grow, let's, let's just use Facebook ads and, and see what happens. Um, so we had great success. They had a, the best success or best ad campaign that we ran was a, um, an ebook download of their catalog. Hmm. And we, we literally got probably pennies on the, on the dollar as far as per cost per lead, wow. 20 cents, 30 cents a lead. Um, so the whole goal was to, to get as many leads in the pipeline and then to have their sales guy in-house just reach out to them. Um, so that was a time that, you know, stopped my agency and, and I really started seeing the potential of ads, of Facebook ads. So I'm like, okay, you know, this is interesting. It's a different, it's very different than what I did. It's more of marketing rather than, you know, development. Again, I, I sucked at sales, right? But I'm like, you know, I think I could do this because I'm a very technical person. Wasn't that difficult to, to launch an ad to, to get somewhat mild success. So I just started going after as many clients as I could. Um, chiropractors, mortgage uh, brokers, you know, real estate agents. So I had, I had done a lot of different um, niches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had success really, really quickly. Um, then I started posting my success online and that's where things really, really went up. So this was now about three years ago, 2016, the end of 2016 is when I started posting my, my results in different groups, for example, click funnels. Um, at the time they weren't so, so hard on, uh, what you could post. They were a lot more lenient. Mm -hmm. So I started getting a following very quickly. Uh, people just started reaching out to me asking for help. I'm like, I don't, I don't help people. I don't even know how to help you. I just know how to do this for myself. And then I started getting people um, asking for a course. So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. And like, you know, so a month, two, two months went, went by, people started asking me, you know, for more and more help. I'm like, okay, let me, let me try to launch a course and see where it goes. Um, my first webinar was a complete flunk. You know, <laughs> mind you, my wife had already had a pancreatic attack back in uh, 2013, uh, in December. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna launch this webinar, see what happens. At that time, she had to go to the hospital again. So I saw my webinar halfway through and I was like, you know, I was like, I gotta go just reach out to me, you know, if you guys are interested in this course. Um, and I, I just rushed her to the hospital and came back and nothing. There was no sales. I was like, at least hoping for one. So this was, I think this was a couple of days right before Christmas time. Mm. So during this whole time of me posting results and just seeing what other people are doing, one thing that I noticed that all the, you know, successful people, what they were doing is they were building a Facebook group. So I was like, let me, let me do that. Let me launch my own group and, and just see what happens. Right. Um, just trying out as many different things as I could. So I did that and that completely really, I think changed everything for me. Um, this was, I think 
the end of December, I think New Year's Eve of 2016 is when I launched my group. Um, so I launched it and I reposted kind of, you know, the, my course that I had for sale. And then I started getting, you know, a couple of people interested. I started inviting all my friends. Then I started, you know, just trying to bring in more and more people. I ended up getting about 2000 people into the group in the first month. Wow. Um, I did, I think that month I did 30,000 or $35,000 in sales. And I was like, wow. Phenomenal. I mean, yeah. Of your, uh, that's of your course at that time, right? Right. Right. Of the course. Exactly. I mean, the last, you know, 10 years of me being an entrepreneur, I only made past 20,000 ones. I was always averaging 12,000, you know, around that time. And I'm like, wow, $30,000 in one month. I'm like, there's something here. Mm -hmm. So for the next year I did that. I just sold my course. I pushed it as hard as I could until I really tapped what I believe was, was the market. And, and mainly it was just my group. I didn't really, I ran a little bit of ads. I think I maybe spent $2,000 on retargeting, but almost all my sales, I did about maybe 400,000 in sales gross um, was just from selling my course that year. Wow. So then I transitioned from that into, Hey, I'm going to do a little bit of coaching. And, um, I did that maybe three months. I just didn't enjoy it. And then I took some time off and then I'm, I'm like, okay, you know, after everything I've done for the last, you know, 10 or 12 years, what is it that I really enjoyed doing? And I'm like, I really enjoyed the agency, but the model that I had, it, it sucked. You know, I was chasing clients. I was, you know, getting payments delayed and uh, you know, I, I didn't want to do that. I'm like, I wanted to have that recurring model. So in July of 2018, you know, I finally decided after a couple months off, you know, income was starting to drop. I'm like, I got to do something. So I met my, my partner. Um, I had spoken with him for a little bit. So we decided to, to, you know, go into chiropractic because I had success. He was a chiropractor, so it was like kind of a perfect fit. And, you know, I'm like, okay, great. I'm like, before, I, you know, this is me telling myself, before I, I start this agency again, this is my kind of my second one, I wanted to build the agency, but with the goal of scalability. You know, I didn't want to, you know, just have to do all the work all the time and work another 80 hours a week. Yep. Um, even though that model, I enjoyed a little bit more because I, see results with my clients over time with different niches. I'm like, you know, I love seeing other clients of, of ours have success, but I didn't want to just work another 80 hours, you know, every single week. So it was just that mindset of, you know, let me build this agency and focus on chiropractors. I've had success. He was a chiropractor and, um, and then just, you know, just build it with, with scalability in, in mind. And that's exactly what we did. Nice. So partnered up with a, with a chiropractor that had kind of some background in it. Um, how did you package that? So what did the, what did the package look like? What is it that you do for these chiropractors? Right. So um, at the end of the day, it's, it's lead gen, just to make it really simple for, for other agencies that are listening out there. Um, you know, we, we, we only use Facebook ads, so we're not, we're not an SEO web design agency at all. We only focus on that one channel of marketing for them, uh, which is Facebook. Sometimes we split test with Instagram, but you know, we, we package it in a way that got them results. And, but the goal was, you know, the last thing that I wanted to do for scalability in mind was to sell them Facebook ads because, you know, and then that niche, and I'm sure other niches as well, when you sell them a channel, um, you know, when you sell them like, kind of like the vehicle, they're just going to be jumping from agency to agency. Yeah. So we really had to push on results. We had to really find out what their pain points are. Um, you know, all those important factors in mind that, that you teach and, you know, and really being able to get results for them, but really take their practice to a whole new level. Um, you know, but, but still offer that one thing that we're really good at. Um, Cause I had thought, I had thought about, you know, offering all sorts of things for them, but Facebook ads was uh, one thing that we've seen consistent results in and out over, over long term, And it was something that I was good. You know, I've obviously taught that to lots of people, but I knew how to really optimize and I knew what to change and, and whatnot. So, you know, not getting the results with Facebook ads wasn't really something I was worried about. Um, 
it was more of, of kind of retaining them and making sure that they stuck, you know, month in and month out. Uh, but more importantly, you also be able to acquire clients, which is where, you know, my partner being a chiropractor kind of helps because he can relate to them uh, on a whole new level than a lot of other agencies can't. No doubt. Yeah. What a, what a great, uh, a great synergy sort of, sort of speak. So providing Facebook ads, but really the, the offering is let us help you generate new patients and kind of grow your practice to a whole other level. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you package that? Like, is it a monthly retainer? Is it a fixed fee? Can you talk about that at all? <clears throat> yeah. So it's, it's a monthly retainer. Um, we charge, um, it's 2,500 a month for the, for the first month, not including ad spend. Most of our docs spend about a thousand dollars a month on ads. Um, and then we actually drop our fees down to 1500 a month after that. Okay. Um, so it's not just 2,500 every single month. So it, yeah, it's, it's a retainer model. We, uh, we initially, um, at first we started doing four month contracts or four month agreements. Now we're at six month. Um, if there's any kind of pushback at all, we'll bring them back to four months. Um, that seems to, to work very well for them. A lot of them don't like being, you know, tiny and long-term, but, but it's all, it's all a retainer model. It's just, you know, they pay us for our service, then they pay for the ads and they get an expected amount of uh, an average of, you know, a certain number of leads every single month. Um, but it's, you know, again, we're not just selling them the ads themselves, the, 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 the vehicle, we're really, you know, doing a lot of the automations for them to follow up. Um, we have our own group where we've kind of brought everyone together where they can share some of the, some of their strategies and, and processes that they, that they do inside their practice just to be able to help each other out. Uh, so it's nice. really having that, that overall synergy with, with clients together. And they really like that because what we're starting to do now is, is go live with, um, with specific docs who are having success mm. and just be able to share their strategies, you know, in our group so that way others can, can relate from that. Um, I went through two days ago and I pulled stats from everybody over the last year as far as appointment rates, show up rates and closing rates from, nice. from Facebook ads. Um, so, you know, so that's kind of what, what I have in mind is, pulling it, you know, those who have really high show up rates just to be able to do a live with them, interview them and see what they're doing differently than others are not in order to get, you know, people in the door, which is something that, you know, I think all businesses struggle with. No doubt. No doubt. So, I mean, I love the, I love the concept of generate the lead, put systems in place to automate the follow up and then aggregate the clients into a Facebook group to create community and kind of, use that as a way to d disseminate knowledge and to kind of retain clients at the highest level possible. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think to me just having them part of a, part of a group is, is a good way to, to retain clients. I think if you don't, if you're just again, providing like a vehicle, which whether, whether it's SEO or Facebook ads, and you're only doing that, you're only providing the bare minimum that they need. Um, because we, we consider ourselves and I think a lot of agencies as more of a partner instead of like a service, you know, mm -hmm. um, they're really partnering up with us to, to allow us to help them grow their business. Um, you know, again, you're not just providing leads, you're, you're really growing their business and you're making them more money, helping their community, all that, all that kind of good stuff. So I think, the, you know, up to a certain level, the more that we can provide for them and really help them, with what we're doing as, as a service, uh, the better off that they'll be as well. No doubt. Love it. Love the package. Love the, the service offering. One question I always like to ask is people, some people are kind of in, earlier in their evolution. What was, how did you guys land the first five clients? Cause usually that's the, that's the struggle coming out of the gates. Can you talk a little bit about how you got those first five? Yeah. So the very first one, um, you know, as together as an agency between my, my, my business partner and I, um, was, a, a chiropractor who was searching, uh, the click funnels group. Mm. And, you know, during my time of me doing, you know, all sorts of niches, I would post results, right? Um, that's one of the best things that you could do on social media is post results and, and you're going to just get people flocking towards you. So I post the results and, you know, most niche business owners, they'll go into groups and they'll search, you know, their, their, their niche, right? Like chiropractor just to see what comes up. Yeah. Um, so I had this doc, um, uh, this chiropractor 
do that. And she reached out to me as a personal message. And she asked me, you know, Hey, I saw some of your postings, you know, you know, on, on in the click funnels group. Um, I was wondering if we could hop on a call and, and see if you can help me grow my practice. You know, where we need to get more new patients in the door. So I was like, Hey, this is a perfect opportunity for my business partner to get on the phone and, and close them, you know? Mm -hmm. Now at that time, you know, again, the whole, my vision was really scalability. I didn't want to just start doing everything. I didn't want to do sales, even though at this time I, I was better at sales. Um, I didn't consider myself a sales, a salesperson that could just do that 24 seven. So I was like, you know, Hey, you know, let's hop on the phone. Let's get her. Um, you know, we we're on the phone, maybe 20, 30 minutes and, and we closed her as our very first client together Love it. and she, and she's still on board with us. Um, now, um, and the good thing is that she prepaid all of 2020 in advance. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is, which is one of our, one, a strategy that we use to really push over that six figure month mark last month. Mm. Um, yeah, and it really helped prepays for the year for the tax savings for the client. Right. Right. Nice. And that really helped. Um, so besides that, you know, the other four, um, was just through networking. Um, he had, he had an, another agency, business partner um, that kind of went downhill after six months. So he had a lot of contacts that he would, you know, he, was, he did a lot of cold outreach on Facebook. So there was a lot of, you know, clients that, you know, were, there was like one or two that were still with him that he kind of brought over with me. And then just a lot of past uh, leads that, and, you know, and other people that he would know. Um, so it was just like 24 seven on just messaging everyone that he knew and, and just trying to see, you know, who needed help and, you know, if we could hop on the phone with them and kind of show them, you know, my past results and, and what I had done in the chiropractic marketing realm with Facebook ads. And, and, you know, that was really how we got our first five. So one reached out to me, two were from his past, uh, you know, agency, and then two were just from, you know, old, old networking leads that he had worked. I love it. So, so a key insight for those of you watching or listening is, you know, share your results. It, you know, share screenshots, share, you know, this is what we spent, this was how many leads, the average cost per lead. That makes you magnetically attractive, especially if you did it for somebody in the niche that you're going after. Um, and then you know, leverage social media, leverage social messenger. It sounds like that's been a great play uh, for, for Danny and his partner. Yeah, I mean, I think just from what I had done in the past to, to the growth now, you know, even go, going through selling a course and doing a little bit of coaching and then the agency, it's all about showing results. I mean, just like you said, it's, it's so magnetic that you're going to, you're not, you're not just going to get the business owner that is in the niche that you're going after, but you're going to get other people asking you for help too. <laughs> even like little one-off trainings. I mean, you can easily charge, you know, 500 to $1,000 for an hour of training, just showing someone how to do like, you know, Facebook ads to roofers, for example. Um, or just these SEO strategies that you all know um, that have been working extremely well for you all. And it's, it, yeah, it's just one of the best things that you can do. Nice. Show results all the time. So, so fast forward. Now you guys are, you know, you're kind of at that close to seven figure mark, almost $83,000 per month and over a hundred thousand, two months in a row. Where, where are the clients coming from at this point? Like what's the, what's the mix? So we entered, 2019 January, we entered with 12 clients. Um, so it was roughly about six months that we went from our first client to, you know, and there's a lot of drop off there. I think there are certain niches that might drop off more than others. Um, so we had our, we had a share of drop offs and, and, you know, and whatever, but so we, we came in through the, uh, the, the new year last year with about 12 clients and, at this time, you know, I kept hearing about the whole dream 100 concept, right? Through click funnels and just other people that had books and courses on it. So I was like, what if we just had a dream 10? <laughs> I was like, let me see, at least do 10%, right? Let me, let me do a dream 10. And I'm like referrals. I'm like, we have to have, we have to really go after referrals really, really hard. And from January till about March, we, we just tried asking for, you know, the clients that we had for as many referrals as we could with, with, you know, getting at least 10 of them to just push it hard to help us get more clients. Um, we only got two really that did that, but those two 
really took us to like that, that 60,000 a month mark. Wow. Um, so we, what we ended up doing, and this worked for us was for every client that they brought us, we would pay them $250. Now, mind you, our service fees is 1500. So for every six that they bring us they they don't pay anything except ad spend. So everyone after that, we started cutting a checkout every month or we actually, we use Zelle. Uh, so we just sell them every month, 250 bucks per client that, that they brought us on board. And, and that helped us a lot. Um, the most that we had ever paid out for those two JVs were, I think about $7,000. This was last summer wow. um, in July. That's a lot of clients. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at one point, I mean, right now we're, we're at, you know, 55, 60 clients a month. Um, the most that we ever had was about 65, 68, somewhere in that range. Um, but, but mind you, even though we had, and this was, I think back in summertime, July, even though we had the most clients back then, we never crossed that six, six figure a month mark. Mm. Um, December was probably besides our, our quick growth was probably the month that we had the lowest amount of clients, but we had the most revenue generated in the, in the month. Predominantly um, through prepays and, and stuff, right? Right, right through prepays. So, you know, we've, I mean, since last month, of course, we've, you know, we've had more client acquisition. We've, we've gotten a lot of referrals. We're starting to go into another vertical. Um, I had done some weight loss campaigns in the past. So we're trying to, we just landed our first weight loss um, client. Uh, they do um, kind of the, uh, the non-surgical uh, red light laser. Okay. I, it's like a red light that hovers over someone and they all, you know, lose weight. So, so we're starting to go after another niche just to kind of expand and, and see if we can kind of multiply our, our results with, with at least a vertical that's really close to chiropractic. Nice. And um, so we've had, we've also had a couple of clients that are starting other, other practices that have prepaid us uh, this month. So that's all really helped to kind of go into our second month of, of hoping of passing that six figure month mark. Very but nice. yeah, but referrals is definitely the, uh, in our, the way that we've done it, the fastest way that we've been able to grow. Yeah. Really smart. You know, putting referral strategy in place. You know, they, they say you're one JV away from a seven figure business. Uh, in your case, it's just putting a, a really smart referral mechanism in place for your existing client base and for some influencers in the industry. And that became a, a an accelerator for you. Right. Right. I mean, I don't think, without, you know, and we've, we've shifted from paying out 250 a month, um, to now just giving them a free month of service. Mm. And, uh, we've been doing that for about three months now and we've gotten a couple other P, uh, you know, not people, but chiropractors that are, you know, referring, um, rather than just having two. And, uh, you know, I think just going through the numbers, it, it seems to work out better for us at the end. Uh, rather than having to pay out, because we're still paying out two fifty for clients that we've that they brought in, you know, over a year ago, a long time ago, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at least in this point, we're like, because it dried up. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, we, you know, again, the most that we paid out was seven thousand. Those two JVs right now, we we were paying out five hundred and seven fifty a month, so it dramatically decreased. Okay. So I think they got to a point where they tapped their own market out yeah. with just pushing referrals to us. So. So we're like, what can we do a little, a little bit differently? That's still going to make, you know, a client of ours really happy with, you know, with referring someone else. And that's just by giving away a free month. Mm. So for every client that they bring us, you know, we get those $2,500 initially, which kind of helps offset that free month cost. And, and they get a free month and, you know, the next month they're going to have to pay unless they, again, repeat that process. Get someone new, right. Right. So now we have about four that are doing this every month. So the, each month they're kind of referring one. So we're hoping that long, long term over the next year that we'll be able to have, you know, at least a dream 10 of docs that are just referring at least one a month. So kind of, you know, just spreading out instead of uh, keeping uh, just to kind of one or two. Very nice. So I know one of your big, one of your big focuses was scale. And one of the things you do really well is you, you run a, a lean operation. How do you fulfill for your clients? How do you get the work done? What does the fulfillment model look like? Yeah. So, so this is something that I, I, I like um, talking about and, and, you know, I like doing. 
um, just because I, I think I've done it fairly well. Of course, there's, you know, there's more that I can learn, but just from talking with other agencies, I mean, we are very lean. I mean, without any ad spend, we're probably at about six to 7% uh, overhead wow. before we split, before we split everything down the middle between, you know, my, my partner and I. So this is, you know, softwares and especially uh, all our VAs that we have. So, I mean, like the first, really the first year, so from July 2018 to last year in July, um, I had done all the ads. You know, I got on sales calls. I, I did, I mean, I, I did pretty much everything all day long. And then I'm like, okay, you know, my focus at the beginning was to really scale it out you know, we're, we're toppling 65 clients now. Um, I, I need help. <laughs> like I can't just run all the ads. I can't onboard. I can't run the ads. I can't optimize and just check stats every day just to make sure things are working the way they are and they're getting leads. I'm like, you know, I need help, but at the same time, I don't, you know, I don't want to pay someone five grand a month to, to come in and do that. You know, I, I've trained people. Why can't I train a VA to do this? So I, I was trying to find a couple of VAs. I, I tried finding ones who had experience. Um, that didn't work out because they always thought that it's not that they thought that they knew more than you, but they already had a, uh, they had certain procedures in mind that they learned from other people that they learned from, you know, on how to do things. And, uh, and that never worked out because I had, like, I had a very specific way of running the ads, optimizing and, and you know, checking all those metrics uh, you know, on a weekly basis, I'm like, you know, let me, let me find someone else that I could train. So I had a VA that I used during my course, you know, era <laughs> and, um, she was very, very detail oriented. Um, you know, she would create slides and she would do research and all that stuff. And I was like, let me try to train her, you know, cause I think someone who's very detail oriented can learn anything that you, that you teach them. And, and I did that. Um, I started, I started her off by onboarding clients, setting up the ad accounts, um, just very, very basic stuff that, you know, you know, I didn't use any of my course videos that I'd done. I, I created, I create very specific short two to three minute videos for her. Mm. And I started her off slowly. Um, and it worked. And, you know, now we're seven months in from, from when I first trained her and she literally, on boards, she runs all her ads, she optimizes everything. Um, and now she's starting to, to really understand how to do things herself without me telling her what to do. Nice. You know, so it's not just changing the ads or the images, it's different. You know, we have like, you know, five different strategies that we use to, you know, get results that that's worked time in time out that we've kind of rotated through. So she understands on when to do the rotations, when to try new things. Um, and it's, it's been great. We now have, I think, total about eight VAs. Um, we have one that just does all the ads. She onboards. So again, she herself does all 55, 60 clients that we, that we have in any given month. Um, I, I check things periodically um, just to make sure I don't lose, you know, focus on what's new out there and, and how to do things. Because if you don't do things after, you know, a couple months, you're going you're gonna to forget, right? Cause I did that after teaching ads for so long, I forgot how to run ads for clients. And I had, you know, kind of had to take me, took, took me a couple of weeks to kind of learn that again when we started. Um, so we have her, we have one, one that's really helped is, uh, she's not really an account manager, but she's more of a client manager is what I call it. It's someone who helps, um, all the communication for, our, for our docs. Mm. So again, we have a Facebook group, we also have messenger group chat for every doc uh, independently. So we put her into all, of, all that. We also have a help, t uh, help ticket system. So there's that's three pretty cool what you do there. So you put a Facebook group together with you, your client services person and your business partner. Right. So it's, it's my business partner. I, um, our client manager and, and then all the docs and their assistants. So it's almost like they have a direct channel to you at any time without feeling like they're going to bombard you on a phone call. Right. Right. Um, the reason why I did the group was, you know, if there was anything that I had to let everyone know kind of on a, on a global scale, I had one area instead of email, cause sometimes email is not checked. I had one 
one reference point, one channel that I could do that. And that was a Facebook group. You know, I had already grown one. I knew how to run it. You know, we have now about 90 total in the group. Um, and that's just not, and the one thing that, that I've done recently is not kick out old, old clients. <laughs> hmm. Um, and I think I did that now just thinking back, uh, because if they see us posting results and they are seeing new strategies come out, even though they've hired another agency, you know, they'll probably come back to us because we're doing something different. It's a good re-engagement channel to keep you guys top of mind. And they're like, Oh wait, those guys were actually pretty good. <laughs> right. Right. So, That's you know, smart. so we have, we have the Facebook group channel. When we started the best level of communication was Facebook group messenger uh, or Facebook messenger. So we literally have, you know, we have over 120 different group chats with all the docs that we've ever acquired. Um, so what we, we bring in our client manager into, you know, all the active ones that, that we've had since we brought her on and she's been with us for about three months now. So again, she, she, had, she looks at all the messages. She works from uh, eight Eastern to about three Eastern, which is her graveyard shift. So every day she'll make sure, you know, if there's any, you know, if there's any questions from docs being asked in messenger, cause a lot of them still use messenger or if they ask a question in the group, or if they send in an email ticket, she'll be able to look at that. And then from there determine, okay, do I need to give this to our Facebook ads VA? So that way she could, you know, handle things or do I need to give it to, to either myself or my business partner? Nice. Um, what I'm doing recently, what I'm doing now is trying to every day. I, if I see something that I have to step in, I figure out what that is. And I tell our client manager, okay, you know, you need to do this. Um, a lot of it was, you know, clients would send in you pictures. I normally would get that. I would give it to my Facebook ads VA, but now, now I tell her, Hey, take this and then just give it to her. Um, we utilize Slack, which I, at first I hated it, you know, a couple of years ago, but now it's like my Evernote. Um, mm. it's, it's one of the best things I've ever done because it really helps. It helps keep me organized. Um, my mind runs a million miles an hour. You know, even, even doing this interview, I'm still thinking of like all these other, other things and, um, you know, using Slack just helps keep client organization in focus and it helps keep all the communication that, that is needed for each client, uh, in a place that we can always reference back at any point if we need to. Yeah. I love, I love Slack as well. M mission critical tool. Yeah. Um, so I mean, so we have, I mean, so again, those are our two main VAs right now. Um, those are probably the only two that we really need to run an, an entire operation. So we can even be more lean if we need to be, uh, the other ones are more part-timers. They work about 20 hours a week and they're only utilized to, um, engage the Facebook ad comments that people leave. Okay. So the part-timers, they maybe work three to four hours a day and all they do is respond to comments on the pages that they're managing, which can be five to 10, uh, you know, per day and just to help engagement. And then, you know, just to help people that are tagging and asking questions just to make, make them feel like they're not being answered by, by the chiropractors because their time are limited. Um, back in the day, most of their CAs, meaning a chiropractic assistant would be the ones having to do that. Mm. So we figured as an agency, let's kind of take it to the next level and provide a better service for them. And that's by taking over at least the comments on the ads. Hmm. Okay. So we have about six, six VAs that are doing that. And then our two really full timers that are kind of keeping the, they're kind of like the glue for the agency besides, you know, my business partner and I. Fantastic. Yeah. Amazing that you can run that level of an operation with that, that small of a team and, and get the clients consistent results and you know, kudos. Thank you for sharing that kind of that structure and that setup with, with us. Yeah, definitely. So if you were to look back over your, over your, you know, your career here, kind of going from 12,000 last year to a hundred thousand for the last couple of months in a row, and definitely on track to have a seven figure agency going through 2020, what, like, what would be the top two or three lessons that you've gleaned that you could share with, uh, with the listeners? Yeah. I mean, and I think, um, you know, this is for anyone who's either, you know, starting from scratch or, you know, or they don't know which direction to go into. I mean, you know, uh, we've both kind of went off, uh, we, we went after any client that we could. 
Um, I think the so the top three things would be niche down. Niche. Um, you know, to have that scalability in mind to be able to grow. I mean, obviously you're at multi seven figures. We're just there. Um, but to have that repeatable process, you can't do that by having different, you know, different things that you're doing for 10 different niches. Right. Yep. Um, so I think just going after one industry is, is, is probably important to do. Um, second thing is sales. <laughs> can't have clients if you don't have sales. So, you know, me, I'm not a, I, I sold clients. I, I know I can do it. Um, but again, I don't want to be focusing on that every day. You know, I, I want to focus on operations and scalability and, and kind of looking at the business through a 30,000 foot overview and then just seeing, you know, what steps need to be, you know, tweaked to, for higher conversions and whatnot. So just having someone or having that skill set in mind, um, I think is, is critical. Um, and the third team or the, th the third team, the third thing would be, um, just building out a team, I think to scale. And this is something that I think really changed my mindset was when you're scaling, you can't focus on, you know, how many clients can I get at any point in time? You know, it's not about, you know, let me try to get 50 clients. Um, because you can only handle so much yourself. So I think building out a good team, whether it's, you know, you have a local brick and mortar team, you guys have probably over 30, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're pretty lean, but at the end of the day, we still have a team that fulfills certain tasks that we can't do ourselves. So as long as we have people in place for, you know, for those, those processes, I, I think is really important to be able to, to grow at least a seven figure agency. I like it. Three, three great tips. Um, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your success and kind of your journey. Would there, you know, would there be any last nuggets of wisdom that you'd want to share with that agency that's just trying to get to the next level? Yeah. Um, consistency is, is super important. You know, you're going to have clients that drop out. I mean, you know, we have clients that drop out all the time. Um, but as long as we know that we're consistent with results, with, you know, uh, certain trainings that we do, um, you know, with referrals, with, you know, cold outreach. I mean, it's just about, it's about consistency, consistency at the end of the day with, with everything that you do uh, in life and business, because at any point, if you stop doing whatever it is that you're doing, then you're not going to kind of go to the next level, you know, kind of like seeing you at the light at the end of the tunnel, you're going through a cave and you see like a really small hint of light and you're almost there in each step that you walk is that light's getting bigger and bigger. But at any point in time, if you, if you decide that you can't take that next step, um, you're never going to, you're never going to break through that darkness and, and actually see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I think just staying consistent and no matter what, you know, you've hear, especially on, on Josh's podcast, um, in his group, even his free group, you hear stories of people who are successful all the time. Um, but you have to, you have to know that, they they weren't successful overnight. They you know they went through struggles and they had experiences that were you know you know five years a decade, um, uh, you know that they that they went through and you know it's just staying consistent is really uh, the game. No doubt, consistency consistency is is key. Well, I mean this this has been awesome. I know you run a Facebook group. Um, you're running a podcast. How can people plug into you? they want, you know, just to kind of get to know you better if they have some questions. Yeah. Um, so I have a Facebook group where 60,000 members. in. so, uh, if you look at entrepreneur hustle, um, is the name of the group. Um, my podcast on air hustle. Um, you can search it on iTunes. I just launched it, uh, you know, about less than two weeks ago. And, uh, if you just want to follow me on Facebook, you can look at my name, Daniel Vega, V E I G A. And um, you can follow me on there and, and hit me up. 60,000 people in the Entrepreneur Hustle group definitely should be in there. Lots of great insights. Um, I've been listening to a couple of Danny's uh, interviews that he's doing on the On Air Hustle podcast. Amazing stuff. I highly, highly recommend it. So, Danny, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your willingness to share. And uh, congratulations on your continued growth and success. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been, you know, great being part of your group. We're definitely learning a lot of things in there. 
lot of real golden nuggets, especially in the mastermind group that, um, that we know wholeheartedly by implementing all that this year, even, even a little bit of it, um, can really take us to that, you know, you know, our goal really is, you know, one and a half, at least we can hit one and a half this year, 2020, uh, then we're definitely, uh, on the right path and, and we know we'll, we know we'll get there for sure. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure big things ahead for, for you guys. Thank you again for coming on the show. It's, it's been a pleasure and, um, continued success to you and, and your business. Yep. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for having me. Thank you.